says 8 o'clock tonight, Unity Hall. 8 o'clock tonight, Unity Hall. Gladys, 8 o'clock tonight, Unity Hall. What's the matter with you? Are you in a trance or something? You're in the wrong lane. Oh, I'm sorry, Helen. There goes my whole week's salary. I haven't had a full paycheck since Christmas. Oh, that's all going to be changed tonight. But, gee, what if they just say strike and leave us out on a limb? They won't. Our demands are reasonable. Yeah, if I lose this job, it'll mean peddling chewing gum and lead pencils for me. I ain't a looker. Get going before somebody fires you now. You're in the wrong lane again. Oh. Strike, strike, strike. That's all I've ever heard in the last week. No wonder I'm nervous. Oh, Maisie, bring me that stand, will you, please? What's the matter with Lulu? No, she's got the jitters. She ran into me just now. I don't blame her. When I think of that meeting tonight... Gee, it's exciting. Where's Unity Hall? 3rd Avenue and 58th Street. Easy, easy. Walls have ears and great big ones in carved restaurants. Did you see what happened to me just now? I'm so nervous I can't think. Girls, <laughs> girls, come on, keep moving. There's a customer at your station. Feed him and get him out of here. Space is money at lunchtime. What would you like, sir? like some bouillabaisse. Huh? Bouillabaisse. You have it, haven't you? Well, I... Uh... Just a minute, please. For Pete's sake, Helen, what's bouillabaisse? It's a kind of a fish stew. We don't serve it. Thanks. I'm sorry, sir, we don't serve it. You don't serve what? We, uh, oh. whatever you said. I see. All right. We only serve what is on the menu. Well, I'll take um, lunch number four. Clam chowder, roast beef sandwich, no vegetables. American cheese, no pie, and coffee. I'm sorry, sir. We don't serve cheese with the lunch. But it says here, apple pie with American cheese. Do you want the pie, sir? No, no. I just want the cheese. We don't serve cheese. But you will bring the pie. Yes, I can bring the pie. And supposing I just snatch the cheese and leave the pie? Yes, sir. Helen. That Frenchman's got me so rattled, I don't know what he wants. Will you simmer down and forget about tonight? I'll take his order. Is there anything I can do for you, sir? Yes. Wait on this table. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but this table's already signed to another waitress. I just came over to see what the trouble is. Trouble? There's no trouble. I just asked for some American cheese, and I don't want pie. You don't want pie? No pie. <laughs> what else do you want? Pen chowder, roast beef sandwich, no vegetables, and coffee. Get them right away, sir. One clam chowder. One clam chowder. One clam chowder. One roast beef, no vegetables. Ferdinand, without flowers. Ferdinand, hold the flowers. Helen, watch your step. He's a spy. Who's a spy? The guy that wants the cheese. Gladys here knows him. Tell her, Gladys. Well, he looks like that Frenchman that used to come to the 42nd Street branch. We used to call him Johnny Big Ears. And did he make trouble? What kind of trouble? Snitching on us and snooping around. He even got two of the girls canned for making dates with the customers. He doesn't look like a spy. Well, he's a foreigner, ain't he? And to me, all foreigners are spies until I learn different. One time, Chowder. I'll soon find out. Pour the soup down his neck, Helen. I beg your pardon, but Mr. Carb's on the phone. Who? Mr. Carb, the man who runs this restaurant. Oh, please, do I have to speak to the manager because I want some American cheese? Well, maybe he wants to talk about something else. But I don't know him. Are you sure? Positive. What name did he ask for? What? I say, what name did this Mr. Carb ask for? 
Now you've got me. I beg your pardon? It was French. But how did you know it was me? Well, you're the only Frenchman in the room. How did you know I was French? Well, 50 million waitresses can't be wrong. Well, where is the phone? Oh, please, no. Uh, there is no phone. Please sit down. But Mr. Carb isn't on the phone. So what is this? I'm awfully sorry. We thought you were a company spy. A spy? Me? We've been having a little labor trouble lately, and it's made some of the girls suspicious. Do I look like a spy? Do I act like a spy? No, I'm awfully sorry. If you'll excuse me, I'll get the rest of your order. Girls, girls, break it up. What's the matter with you today? Come on, get going. You know, in these terrible days, it is quite a serious matter to be taken for a spy. I know. I'm sorry. In my country, a spy is taken out immediately and shot. That would be terrible. Yes, it would, wouldn't it? And in Germany... <laughs> we both be shot. Oh. I see that you realize the seriousness of the offense. Well, it, it wasn't really me. It was some of the other girls. Why didn't you? Well, I've been around this business long enough to know a gentleman when I see one. Thank you. And what is your idea of a gentleman? Any man who doesn't immediately ask a girl what she does with her evenings. Lulu. One coffee, Joe. Coffee? He's no spy. He's just lonely. Tell him. There's a man here to see you about a haul. Oh, thanks. Uh, and here's the rest of your order. Look, uh, give this to Prince Charming with my compliments. And remember, the customer's always right. Where is he, Bill? Out there. Don't you girls back down tonight. We got a surprise for you. That sounds exciting, Tommy. Just you wait and see. Hello, Helen. Hello, Jim. They told me it was somebody about the hall for tonight. You don't think they'd let me into Carb's kitchen if they knew I was organizing this strike, do you? You're pretty smart, aren't you? Can you get away? Yes, give me one minute to change my dress. I'm sorry, Prince Charming, that I thought you were a heel. <laughs> That's perfectly all right. What do you call me? A heel. No, uh, the other. Prince Charming. Oh, have I made another mistake? Helen called you that. Oh, she did? Where is she? She's out seeing a man about hiring Unity Hall. Oh. Are you girls giving a dance? No, we're having a meeting tonight. Secret meeting. Um, will Miss Helen be there? Sure, we'll all be there. Oh. A meeting at uh, Unity Hall, huh? The manager knows I'm going out. All right. Is everything all set for tonight? Yeah. How about the girls? Mm, they're all keyed up. Pull that for me, will you? I think they'll go through with it if they have to. Oh, I hope so. I never handled waitresses before. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be handling them now. I know. I'd appreciate it. You think we'll have to go out on strike? I'm afraid so. Unless Carb says more this afternoon when I see him than he has so far. Just go away and forget him. But how did you find out? Uh, oh, what you did with your evenings? Oh, that's nothing. I found out enough about you to write a biography. Just what did you find out? Well, in the first place, I found out that you lived at uh, 452 East 52nd Street, that you are an orphan, that you came from Nyack, New York, that you weigh 
116 pounds in your stocking feet. You've been talking to Lou. <laughs> no, no, just listening. Hurry, girls, the meeting's about to begin. Well, it's been nice seeing you. Can't I get a ticket and go in with you? The only way you can get a ticket to this show is get a job and join the union. And I have a faint suspicion your interest in me wouldn't go as far as that. Well, as a matter of fact, I already belong to your union. Oh, CIO or AF of L? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Just what I thought. You don't even know what a union is. How much do you want to bet that I get in? I'll bet you a plug quarter I got for a tip today. Bye. Au revoir. Members of Local 153, there's only one story we want to hear tonight. The chair will entertain a motion to dispense with all regular business, including the reading of the minutes. I make such a motion, Mr. Chairman. I second the motion. All those in favor, say aye. Aye! The bus boys, they're with us. Bless their little hearts. Boys, we've come to stand by you, girls. Win, lose, or draw. Fine seats, everyone. Looking for a seat? Yes. Here's one. Thank you. What branch do you work in? Huh? Uh, Wall Street. And now. The man who has done more than anyone to build this union. The man we are all waiting to hear. Brother Holden. Well, girls, boys, we've seen Mr. Carb, your committee and I. We presented your demands as reasonably and as fairly as we knew how. Mr. Carb listened politely, showed us every courtesy, and we brought you back exactly nothing. <laughs> nothing, not one single word of hope, nothing. Mr. Carb will not compromise. You can take it or leave it. That's Carb's answer to you. Work or quit. We won't work and we won't quit. We'll strike. Yeah, we'll show them. No, we won't strike. How can we strike? What chance have we got? A bunch of girls against a strong outfit like Carb. We ain't a bunch of girls. We're a union standing together. Yeah, and maybe getting licked together, too. We'll strike. Carb's is as good as any place. Maybe better. Yeah, I suppose you're just tickled every time you get fined for broken dishes. What about the layoffs when it's slack and the customer being always right, no matter how fresh he's been with you? I say we strike. Yeah. You want to come along with me? What are you going to do? Just a moment. Just a moment, Vince. I know how you feel. Nobody likes strikes. They mean hardships and hunger, suffering and trouble. Only sometimes men and women workers feel crushed and helpless. When that time comes, they have to fight hard. They have to strike. Are you married? No. Then you have no children or grandchildren. Well, I have grandchildren, and I have to work to support them because their father was killed in a strike. Don't let a railroad get in this without thinking it over. I tell you, we can't strike. My mother is sick. I need medicine for a doctor. I can't afford to lose my job. Neither can I. I need every penny to take care of my baby.
what right I have to speak. Perhaps none, because in a way, I'm more fortunate than the rest of you. I have no family to support. I'm alone in the world, and I can get along on my earnings as a waitress. I can even put a few pennies aside every week so that someday I might be something else. But I've worked with you girls, and I've seen the worry and fear on your faces. I've seen you tremble at the thought of losing your jobs. I've seen you struggle to make one penny do for two. The way you skimp and save and still never have an extra dollar for a new hat, a pair of stockings, any one of a million things a girl might want. We've all heard these speeches tonight. Some of you have children. Some of you have parents, aged and sick, depending on you. And it's not for me or Mr. Holden or anybody to tell you what to do. I'd rather cut off my right arm than be responsible for a decision that would bring you more suffering or more hardship. But we want the right to stand on our own feet, to enjoy life, to feel like free human beings. And you can't just go on hoping for those things. That's what Mr. Holden means when he says you've got to fight. He knows nobody's going to hand you those things on a silver platter. You've got to go in there and make them listen. And if the only way to do that is strike, then I say strike! Strike! <laughs> Where will you be if I want to get in touch with you later? I'll be at home. Is there anything wrong? No, except we're going to try to pull the girls out tonight. You were superb. I've never heard anything like it. Thanks. Oh, you were marvelous. Simply marvelous. Oh, thanks again. You were wonderful. You're not careful. I begin to think I was good. Oh, no, no, please. I may be expressive myself badly, but... Oh, you express yourself beautifully. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, I've never met a woman before who could make speeches, call strikes, serve pancakes, and look beautiful all at the same time. Are you kidding me? No, I assure you I'm not. Helen! Oh, hello. Oh, good evening. Gee, Todd. Where are we going? Oh, say. How would you like a little drive in the park? Oh, I think that would be lovely. Good. Come on. Taxi. Hey. Thank you. Take this lady for a little drive in the park. Now, what would you like to do? Go someplace in Dallas? Too warm. A little bite of supper? No, thanks. Well, shall we walk? Say, who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Philippe André Pierre Chagall. Well, you're fairly oozing with names, aren't you? <laughs> well, I was such a wonderful baby that everyone wanted to hang his name on me. Oh. Hm. That still doesn't explain how you got in that meeting tonight. Well, I've told you. I have a union card. See? Oh, a piano player. Uh-huh. Oh, where are you playing? I'm not playing anywhere right now. Oh. No job? No job. Where have you been playing? Oh, here and there. Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, Chicago. But nothing steady, huh? Nothing steady. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, I never would have taken you for a union man. Uh huh? Well, until tonight, I dislike unions intensely. What'd you join one for? Well, if I hadn't, I would have had to, to move my own piano. That's the trouble with the world today. Everybody wants to do the playing, and nobody wants to move the piano. Get away! Oh. What's the idea of pushing me into the can? Oh, what's the matter? Did you hurt yourself? 
can't trip to my pants. You tripped on your pants. Well, they are kind of long, aren't they? That's a fine-looking guy you've got, you know. Yeah, the car's okay, but the engine sure is crummy. Oh, can, can't you hold them up that rope over yeah, there? Yeah, sure. Hold them up with one hand, like that, see? And then push with the other. Oh, you'll beat every car on the street. Next time I'm going to use my sister. She ain't got no pants. <laughs> Perfect symbol of today. How so? Capitalism taking a rise and labor pushing with his pants falling down. How can such ideas come out of such a pretty head? <laughs> when you're born on my side of the fence, you get those ideas for nothing. And what do you want for five cents? What is this? Pier 27, East River. And on a warm night like tonight, it's the only place you can get a breath of fresh air. Reminds me of Venice. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn on the other side. I like it. A little crowded, maybe, but what's down there? Just a landing pier. Oh. Hey, aren't you afraid to fall off? What have I got to lose? <laughs> maybe he's a hack. Did you catch anything, Sonny? <laughs> Are you trying to catch a fish? No, the other shoe. <laughs> Why did you follow me tonight? Huh? How'd you happen to pick on me? I didn't pick on you. Yes, you did. As soon as you saw me, you asked me to wait on your table. Oh, but that was because, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Lulu couldn't give me what I wanted. Oh. And besides, I wanted to hear you sing. Did she tell you that, too? Yes, she said you had a lovely voice, and that when you first came to New York, you wanted to do something about it. I'm going to smother her when I get home. No, 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 please don't. What would I do for information about you? Who knows? If you're patient, I might tell you a few things myself sometime. That's the trouble. Time is very short. 72 hours, exactly. Are you going away? Yes, I've got to go back to France. Oh. Say, lady! Come on in, the water's fine. I haven't got a bathing suit. That's nothing to your mind. <laughs> uh, tell me, have you always wanted to sing? Mm -hmm. Why did you give it up? I found I had to eat. <laughs> oh, let's don't talk about that now. It seems so long ago, and... I've gotten used to what I'm doing. No, no, you haven't. You never will. I could tell from your speech tonight that you're the type of girl who must always go ahead, who must never give up. Say, look here. You can't just wander into my life and start telling me what to do. I've been getting along all right. Hey, Jesus, the cop! Come out of that before I come down and get you with my club. Hey, lady, you better come back here. Nobody's allowed out of the dock. Let's go. What are we hiding? <laughs> what are we hiding for? We haven't done anything wrong. Well, I know you're down there. I can hear you breathing. <laughs> We'd better get out of here before we get into trouble. <laughs> Good evening, officer. Hello. <laughs> Here we are. Well, good night and goodbye. Oh, not goodbye. We've just met. Hello, Helen. Hello. Well, I just heard the carb girls are out on strike. Yes, they are. Well, good night. Good night. What were you saying? I said not goodbye. Well, you're going away, aren't you? Not for three days. Look, tomorrow is Sunday. Can't we spend it together? I, I beg your pardon. Can you direct me to the Lexington Avenue trolley? Uh, yes, that's um, two blocks down and three blocks over. Thank you. Not at all. Well, I've been told there are seven million people in this city. And tonight I've met them all. <laughs> Can't we go somewhere tomorrow so we can be alone? I'm afraid not. With the strike and everything. Oh, I'm sure they can spare you for one day. And I have so little time. Good evening, Hella. 
How did the meeting go? Oh, fine, Mr. Brown. That's good. Warm night. <laughs> See you will come tomorrow. Oh, don't shake your head. I'll be here at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> good night. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Helen. It's getting late. Oh, she'll be along in a minute. Oh, hello. Where have you been? I was getting worried. I just went for a little walk. It's so hot. You were swell at the meeting tonight. Well, I didn't do anything. Oh, yes, you did. Well, when I saw you get up there and heard you, I was... Oh, hello. Oh, all right, all right. I'm going to bed before I have to take another ride in the park. Helen, I want to thank you for the way you pulled those girls together for me. I told you I couldn't handle women. I only hope I did the right thing. Oh, of course you did. We'll win this fight hands down. Say, where did you ever learn to speak like that? I didn't. I just believed what I was saying, and the words sort of came out. We could go a long way together, you and I. You'll go a long way, Jim. I've always known that. So will you. You're not the kind of a person who'll stand still. You'll go ahead. You can't help it. Why do you look at me like that? It's funny. Somebody else said the same thing. What are you doing tomorrow night? Huh? I said, what are you doing tomorrow night? Oh, well, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. What about having dinner with me? I'll drop in around 8. All right. Well, I guess I'll be going. Um. Good night. Good night, Jim. Helen. Oh. Wake up. If I'm dreaming, just let me sleep. You like it? Never want to go back. Let's head for the open sea. Just think of it. A picnic lunch from the Ritz on a yacht on Long Island Sound. <laughs> Only this is not a yacht, just a sloop. A sloop? The big brother to a cat boat. Oh, don't call it anything so uninspiring. It's wonderful. All right, it's a slice of the moon. Nothing can be commonplace where you are. I like your saying that. I hope you mean it. Don't you think I do? Helen, look at me. Hold the chill a minute, will you? Hold it steady. What's the matter? There is a squall coming. What are you doing, a squall? I'm going to try to beat this one. <laughs> Put it in on your left, slowly. All the way? We're going about. Do you need any help? Oh, no, sir. Not for a little blow like this. Look at those black clouds over there. Do you ever see anything so black? We better go before we get soaked. Look at it, 
May I have your things? Thank you. Item? No, I like stones. Yes? They look more pleasant through a window. Look at that surf. Is this yours? Yes. And the boat and the car? Uh-huh. Bonsoir, monsieur. Oh, bonsoir, Nicolas. Uh, would you like to fix up a bit? Yes, I would. Show the lady to the guest room, would you? Wait a minute. I'll have a beautiful fire ready for you. That'll be nice. Anything you wish, just drink. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, we'll have dinner here, in front of the fire. Right, sir. At what time would you like me to serve? Oh, around seven. Right, sir.
Please don't stop. I was trying to make more noise than the storm. Dream you had such a lovely voice. Thank you. I never dreamed you were a great pianist. Oh. You with your union card. I thought you were just an ordinary piano player out of a job. But I told you my name. But how was I to know you were the great Andre Chagall? Who'd ever expect to find you dining in carbs on a blue plate special? Heaven bless Mr. Carr, who was placed on earth so that we two could meet. To Mr. Carr. Hmm. To Mr. Carr. May his conscience bother him till he gives us what we want. <coughs> oh. Well, I'm being punished. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me who you really are? Would it have made any difference? Might have. That's what I was afraid of. Are you angry? No. Just wondering what I'm doing here. Having dinner? Spending the evening? Do you mind? No. It's a lovely room. So secure, full of lovely things. Everything a person could want. Everything? Oh, you exaggerate, I hope. Oh, well, maybe a little. But it must be very nice to be surrounded by pleasant things. Space to breathe in, time to look around you. Music, boats, brandy. Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Yes? What? Coast Guard Station. I can't hear you. Hello? I wonder what's happened. Hello? Nicola? The wires must be down. 
Hello? Nicolas. Oh, monsieur, the lights are out. <laughs> yes, yes, I can see that. Uh, bring some candles, will you? No? No, never mind. The far light is enough. We don't need to see the far corners of the room, do we? <laughs> I'd better be getting back to town. From the looks of the storm, it's now or never. Let's make it never. Better make it now. But the storm. I'm not afraid of storms. Nathan. My head and coat. Head and coat. Mm. Monsieur Philippe, no dinner? No dinner, Nicolas. I think you better put this on. Oh, I'm all right. Shall I get the car, Monsieur Philippe? No, never mind. I'll get it myself. Better put this around you. Although I have no sympathy for a girl who prefers wet feet and pneumonia to me and my far side. Thank you. Not at all. <laughs> not here. Coming down in buckets. Mm -hmm. You see all right? Yes, yes. What's that? It's a car. It's turned over. Nobody in it. Thank heaven. It's getting darker. Mm. Isn't that wind? No chance of our tipping over, is there? No. Water rises rapidly. 
about that, boys? Well, the Coast Guard airplane, warning people to get away from the ocean. I feel guilty dragging you out with this. Maybe you've saved our lives. How? My house may be in the middle of the ocean by now. Stay here until the storm is over. I wonder if there's anybody around. I don't know. I'll go and see. Seems to be deserted. I wonder what's in here. Huh? There should be some candles somewhere. Barge in like this? Hmm? Barge? What does it mean? <laughs> it means to break in without being asked. Oh, well, 
I suppose it's all right on a night like this. Here we are. I don't think anybody will mind our using a few candles. There, that's better. Nice comforting things, candles. Always remind me of Christmas and the holidays when I was a child. Your hand is trembling. You're frightened? Not now. Oh, we are quite safe here. After all, this storm is not going to last forever. I read about one in the Bible that lasted 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> what was that? Oh, probably some window blown open. Hold this. I'll see what it is. There it is. I thought I should at least say thank you. Yes. yes, we should be grateful. Oh, look. There is an organ loft up there. Oh, I think it will be much warmer. Don't you think? Yes. <laughs> when I was a boy, I used to sing in a choir until they found out what was wrong with it. Well, I bet you looked angelic. <laughs> The old player master had a wooden leg. <laughs> and when he beat time with it, you would have thought that the whole balcony was coming down. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> and now, we'll try to make you comfortable. Take off your wet coat. Warm now? Uh-huh. Feel safe? Yes. Hungry? Mm-hmm. Well, have to have a nice steak in your pocket, do you? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Piece of apple pie, maybe? I still don't like apple pie. <laughs> I'd settle for a nice hot cup of coffee, wouldn't you? I'll settle for being here with you. You can still say that? After all we've been through? Shall I read to you? Much rather you play for me. If the motor is not working, you'll have to do the pumping for me. Seems to have a slight cold. <laughs> it's been up here very long, I'm not surprised. You know, you're pretty swell. Me? Why? I saw that water rising downstairs. I know what you're trying to do. Philip. Yes? Supposing this is the end of the world. Oh, what gives you an idea like that? Oh, I don't know. A storm, maybe. Church, your music. Maybe I'd better stop playing then. Oh, no. Please don't. You know, when I was a child at the orphanage, I always used to try and imagine what it would be like, the end of the world. But I never expected to die in an organ loft for the famous pianist. <laughs> How did you imagine it? Well, I don't know. I sort of saw myself in a beautiful long chiffon robe, standing on the top of a hill. 
and people dying like flies all around me. But I never seemed to die. I just stood there, waiting for the clouds to open and a chariot to come down and whisk me away. So if it is this way? No. This is much better. Helen, there's something I must tell you. Not now, please. We have such little time together. Let's be happy while we can. But when morning comes... When morning comes, we must say goodbye anyway. You see, <laughs> I happen to have fallen in love with you. I realized it at the house. That's why I left. It seems we're to be given a little added time before we go back into those separate worlds from which we come. So don't spoil it by reality. Let me dream just a little while longer. Somehow, I wish morning would never come. Look at that. I suppose we should waken them. Shall I poke them with something? No, no, Henderson. <clears throat> <clears throat> I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm the Reverend Mr. Morris. This is Mr. Henderson, my organist. We've come to see what the storm has done to our little church. Well, I hope you... <clears throat> I hope you don't mind our taking shelter. You see, my cab woke down. We didn't know where to go. Oh, it was raining so hard we couldn't see. Well, you were fortunate to have found the church and to have stayed here. Uh, did the storm do a lot of damage? The entire countryside is flooded. Do you live in this neighborhood? Well, New York. We can get you back to the emergency headquarters. And from there, I believe you will be able to get some sort of transportation back to the city. Oh, that would be very kind of you. And I think we'd better start right away. For although the church was saved, it is flooded, and it may not be entirely safe. Well, how are we going to get out? Uh, we have a boat downstairs. Oh, Reverend, in my excitement yesterday, I forgot my lunch. To think this good food was here all night. Are you hungry? I'm so hungry I could eat anything that wouldn't bite me first. And there's chicken. Uh -huh. And cheese. Thank you. Uh, some people say that music is the food of love. But personally, I always have to have three square meals a day. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Henderson, please hurry. Uh, coming. Uh, will you have something else? Oh, uh, no, thank you. you. Uh, 
You better get dressed. Either my feet have swollen or my shoes have shrunk. <laughs> what time is it? Hmm? Ten to seven. Why? I suddenly remember this is Monday morning. I'm supposed to be picketing Carb's restaurant at noon. What will happen if you're not there? They'll probably line me up and shoot me as a traitor to the cause. <laughs> well, maybe I'd better not take you back then. What about you? You're sailing. Or had you forgotten about that? No, I haven't forgotten. What time does your boat sail? Oh, about uh, midnight tomorrow. desperately in love with you. And I don't know what we're going to do about it. Please, Harry. We're coming. Philip. The Reverend is getting very impatient. It's perfectly safe. Uh, Mr. Henderson will show you the way. You've been very kind, sir. I don't know what we would have done without your boat. Say nothing of your church. I hope you'll visit our little church in dry weather, too. Uh, goodbye. 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 Thank you. If you'll come with me, I'll show you the way. There's a soup kitchen up there if you'd like some hot coffee. On the lowlands, the houses were completely washed away. Look at that over there. That was the brown house. They say that the baby was lost. Oh. Could we get some coffee, please? Well, now that you're set, I'll be getting along. You'll find the buses over there. Thanks again for everything. Oh, I hope you won't let this visit discourage you. This is a rottenest summer we've had in some time. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye. sir. Goodbye. You are. Thanks. This bus leaving for New York. Free transportation right into the city. All right, right this way for New York. This bus going to New York. Look, if we hurry, maybe we can make that bus. All right. Thank you very much. Thank this you. This bus going to New York. Monsieur, Monsieur Chagall. Where? <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, Monsieur, you're safe. I looked for you all night. I found your car and I thought something dreadful might have happened. No, no, we're all right. What about you? Oh, nothing ever happens to me, monsieur. But, uh, madame et la mère de madame vous attendent là-bas, dans la voiture. Oh. When did they come? About half an hour ago. I tried to telephone you last night at your apartment, it's but... all right. I'll come right away. Very good, monsieur. This bus going to New York, free transportation. Helen, will you excuse me a moment? Your wife? Yes. I tried to tell you last night. I know. I wouldn't let you. It's all right. Will you come and meet her? No. You run along. She's probably worried. Wait here, will you? 
I'll be right back. Where are they? Right, sister, monsieur. This bus going to New York, free transportation. Come on, two of you. All right. Out about a half a mile ahead. Any chance of getting through? Looks like we're in for a good long wait. If you people want to get out and stretch, you'll have plenty of time. Excuse me. I wonder if there's a telephone around here. You might try one of those stores, but I doubt if there's a line through. Thank you. Helen. Excuse me a minute, will you? Why did you run away? It seemed the only thing to do. I'm not very good at scenes. Don't you think you at least owe me a chance to explain? What is there to explain? I took a trip to the country. I had a marvelous, exciting time. Now it's over. That's all. No, it isn't all, and you know oh, it. Philip. Yes? They say we stand a much better chance of getting there if we take the North Road. All right, we'll try. Oh, Paddy, uh, this is Miss Lawrence, the young lady who was standard with me in the church. How do you do? This is Mrs. Dumont. How do you do? Can't we give you a lift? Oh, I don't think so, thank you. Oh, please, come. There's no telling how long you may be stranded here. Oh, that's very kind of you, but the buses are... Oh, please, high. come along. This is my wife, Madeleine. Uh, this is Miss Lawrence. How do you do? Uh, you sit in the back. Yes, go right in. All right, girls. Do you live in New York, Miss Lawrence? Yes. Oh, I see the cars are moving. You must have had a dreadful experience during the storm. I was scared to death. <laughs> Were you? Mm. Oh, I love storms. I like the thunder and lightning. But they won't let me have them. They say they're bad for me. Madeleine. Oh, but that's because we don't like you to excite yourself, dear. Madeleine hasn't been very well lately. You shouldn't have come all the way down here, dear. You've put such a strain on yourself. That's what I told her, but she insisted upon coming. Oh, but I'm all right now, Mother. Really, I am. It's just when they tell me I can't do things that I feel badly. That last night we had was such a fool. She thought she could stop me from doing things. She even fed me things I didn't like as if I were a child. I'm not a child. I had a child once. Didn't I have a child? Yes, dear. <laughs> yeah. They didn't want me to come down here to look for Philip. But I got out on a window ledge, and I didn't come back. Then they let me. They thought I'd fall. But I wasn't afraid. Oh, dear. You're tired, dear. Lie back and be quiet.
Thank you so much for the lift. Well, not at all. You must come to see us sometime when Madeline is feeling better. Goodbye. 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 Only be a minute. I'm sorry it had to happen this way. I must see you again. It's better not. Goodbye, Philip. Earth, have you been? Hello, Lou. What's the matter? You look as if you'd spent the night in a mouse trap. Yeah. What time is it? Like half past eleven. I suppose you know where to pick it at twelve. Sure. That's why I came home. Say, where did you go with that Frenchman? Oh, took a little trip out on Long Island. Long Island? Then you must have been in that hurricane. That's right. Well, blow me down. That sounds just like him. He couldn't help it if there was a hurricane. Helen, honey, maybe it's none of my business, but I'm telling you, don't ever trust a musician. I had a boyfriend once who played the sax, and I know. Any new developments in the strike? Nothing much. Holden chewed the fat all day yesterday with Carl and his lawyers, but they didn't seem to get anywhere. So far, it's a deadlock. How do you know? Well, Holden was around here last night. He wanted to take you to dinner. How is he? Well, he's still got his health. Say, you sound as if you'd been away for 20 years, like Rip Van Winkle. It's just how I feel. Have you fallen for that piano player? Oh, no, please don't ask questions. It's fine. <laughs> Madeline, dear, don't you think you'd better lie down and rest? I don't want to rest, Mother. I want to do something exciting. When I rest, I dream. Come, Mrs. Chagall. You don't help me. You, you just watch me. Madeline, she knows best. Go lie down like a good girl. Why does everyone try to make me do what I don't want to do? Where's that girl? What girl, dear? That nice girl in the car. She's gone home, dear. Oh. Will she be back? Sometime, maybe. Why? I liked her. Yes, I liked her very much. I think I'll go take a rest. That's right, dear. I'm so worried about her. What was that she said in the car about getting out on a window ledge? Oh, she didn't really. That's just another one of her fantasies. She seems far worse today. I feel so helpless. Well, I hope the voyage in Paris will make a difference. She'll be all right. I'll give her something to make her sleep. Philip, you've been marvelously patient with Madeline. And as her mother, I want to thank you for his food. been reached. The strike is settled. Who won? You did. Yeah! Report for work in the morning. Oh! Don't forget, girls. If Helen hadn't given us that pep talk, we might have backed down. Oh. Yeah.
Helen. I had to see you again. I couldn't possibly leave things as they were. I wish we could. I wish we could leave them the way they were before we met. Helen, don't be bitter. Oh, I'm not bitter. I just feel sort of numb in here. Helen, I have done you a great injustice in allowing you to get involved in my life. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Philip. It's no more your fault than mine. I should have had the courage to tell you last night when I started. I wasn't very much help to you, was I? I didn't want to hear anything that was unpleasant. How long has she been this way? About five years. The baby came. It was born dead. She never got over it. Oh, how dreadful. When I asked you into the car, I had no idea that she would be taken that way. I mean, that it would come to you as such a shock. She's quite all right for long periods at the time. Then suddenly, a cloud comes over her mind again, and she becomes like a child. Isn't there any hope of her ever getting better? I'm afraid not. Fortunately, the doctors say that she's not unhappy. She lives in a world of her own. And you? I have my work, my music. And now I have you. Philip. I can't give you up. I'm glad you came, sir. What's the trouble? Madeline has locked herself in her room and won't come out. How long has she been in there? Ever since you left. She talked to us at first, and then she put on the radio at full blast. Madeline? Madeline? Isn't there a basket to this door? Yes. I was afraid to use it. She threatened to jump out of the window if he did. Oh, Philip, I'm so frightened. Madeleine. Oh. Oh. Buddy. Pull yourself together, dear. Look. She changed her dress. She must have gotten out some way. But how? Where could she have gone? <laughs> oh. Hello. Are you surprised to see me? Well, yes, I thought... Is anybody with you? No. No, Philip would be furious if he knew I'd come. Why did you come? Because Philip is in love with you. How do you know that? Did he tell you? No, he didn't have to tell me. I knew it. You see, I'm not always as mad as people think I am. Cigarette? No, thanks. I'll get you a light. <laughs> you know, they think smoking is bad for me, but I like to smoke. So I do it every night after they've gone to bed. Don't call anyone on that telephone. 
If you do, I'll tell the whole world about you and Philip. There's been nothing between Philip and myself. <laughs> That's funny. Don't you believe me? Yes, I believe you. That's why it's so funny. Because there isn't going to be anything between you and Philip. Ever. From now on. You sound very vindictive. Hasn't he always been kind to you? Yes, that's just it. I don't know what I'd do without him. And I know I can't share him with anyone. You see, when my mind is clear as it is now, I always know that that darkness will come down on me again. And when it does, it's only the thought of Philip that gives me courage. You don't need anything like that. There are plenty of men for you. But I have to hang on to the one I have. Do you understand? You don't need to threaten me. Of course I don't. But I have put one weapon in your hands. If Philip ever knew I'd come here and talk to you like this, he'd hate me. And you can tell him, you know. Nothing I can do could stop you. But you won't, will you? It's unfair to ask that of me. Yes, but I am asking it. You won't. Will you? No. Yeah, I knew you wouldn't. Why? Because I'm helpless. And you're not. That's a funny victory. You win because you're helpless. I don't think we should wait any longer, Paddy. We should notify the police. Oh, but the publicity, Philip. We can't worry about that now. Hello. Get me police headquarters, please. Yes. Hello, Mother. Where have you been? Out. Out is a big place. I've just been for a little walk. Well, did he ask you to go to the end of the world? He wants to see me tomorrow. Are you going to? I don't know. What time is it? You mustn't miss your boat. No. I still have a few more minutes. What about your bags? Oh, they have already gone down in the car with Madeline. Don't you want to wear your flowers? No. It seems a shame to stick pins in them. I just want to say them. It's a lovely dress you're wearing. I'm glad you like it. I've been saving up for a couple of years. I didn't know what for until you asked me to dine with you tonight. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. You must have had plans. You must have had other things you were saving for. Mm -hmm. Plans have a way of changing sometimes, haven't they? More wine, madam? Thank you.
thank you. You know, this wine comes from the vineyards near my home. Does it? I wish you knew my little village. I'm sure you would like it, as I do. Helen, I want to ask you something. Will you come to Paris with me? If I came to Paris, I'd be living in the shadows of your life. I couldn't do that, Philip. Not even for you. I'd come to hate myself in time. I would even wish that she... I know. Forget what I said. You've done so much for me. I've been able to offer you so little. I don't want anything, Philip. See? I ordered candles on the table because you said they reminded you of birthdays and holidays and happy things. Philip, you've been so... Now, now. People are looking at you. They are saying, who is that beautiful woman? They mustn't say, why is she crying? That's right. Must they? <laughs> My nose always gets red when I cry. <laughs> would go with my flowers, would it? <laughs> hmm. All right. What did he say? Uh, the cab is waiting. It's time to go. Will you, will you come down to the boat with me? No. I'd rather you just got up and left as if you were coming back again. If you'd just been called away for a minute. Farewell. I'll be back in a little while. I'll be waiting. <laughs> 